All right, so we talked about in the last one um, how there are two different ways or two different types of um, figuring out the rate law. There's the differentiated rate law. Um, which is usually just called the rate law and the integrated um, both of these give the same thing um, it's just you know two ways kind of to reaffirm that you got the right answer um, you know it's better to do things two different ways and get the same answer than only do it one way and hope you got the right answer right um, this one is a lot more complicated and I'm going to approach it backwards to try to help people who don't know calculus understand what's going on and even people who do know calculus maybe to see it a little bit better. When we looked at a first order reaction before and when you saw it in your book, um, we saw that our line went something like this, right? Where we had lots and lots and lots of our uh, uh, reactants and then it got to the point we didn't have very much of it left over. It turns out that having a straight line, a uh, curved line gets very, very complicated. Um, you, that's when you have to start doing things with calculus. You have to start doing things um, with uh, differentiated equation, uh, diffy cues. Um, and so a lot of scientists spend a lot of time trying to figure out a way to make this a straight line. Um, that gives them access to linear algebra and it makes everything a lot more straightforward. With a first order reaction, the way that we make things um, a straight line is to take the concentration that we had and make it a natural log of that. Um, if you do that, instead of having a graph that looks like this, where we have the concentration um, by time, you have a graph that looks like this, uh, where that is a straight line, I know it's not perfect, where you have the natural log of the concentration of our product over time. And so it becomes a lot easier to do calculations and manipulations with it. Okay, so that is going to change our equation then um, from the nice and simple rate is equal to k like that into something that looks like the natural log of my concentration is equal to my rate times the time plus the natural log of the concentration I started with. So this is the concentration, oops, I should put a knot on this. Um, so this is the concentration that I end with, okay, this is the concentration that I start with. That's what this little zero here means. All right, uh, so this is the differentiated rate law. This one right here, this is the integrated rate law. All right, and essentially what it is showing us, what it is, is it's changing it from that curved line to that straight line, um, which allows us to uh, do some different manipulations. One of the manipulations that we can do with this is if we take, um, so we have the ln of A is equal to negative kt. Um, hopefully I put that negative on before. If I didn't, make sure that you add that on. Um, plus ln of a naught. If I divide this across, okay, then I can just put these two together. So I have basically 1 is equal to negative kt. Um, plus ln and then I'm going to take this across so then that's going to give me kt is equal to ln of a naught over a okay and that a can be whatever your reactant is it doesn't matter at all all right, so this is another form that we can uh, have that in. Um, one of the things that this becomes useful in then, so so that's what that's what we can get from that. That's why we can do it with that. Um, 
One of the ways that this becomes useful then is if we are looking for half-lives. How long does it take to get from a starting concentration to half of that concentration? So we did this kind of last year um, with nuclear chemistry, and we're going to do it with regular chemistry now. Um, with that set up, where we have your ln of a naught a uh, is equal to kt. What we find out is that in a first order reaction, um, this is a very constant thing. Well, we we want the half amount, so we want the secondary amount to become half of what the first amount is. So I can do that, right? Um, which is going to give me when and I could put that there, which is going to give me ln of two. Uh, I don't know if I explained that well enough. If, if I have my original concentration going to my end concentration, okay, I want this to be exactly half of that, so I can say that right, and so I'm just replacing this down here. Um, and and so then these will cancel out, and that just leaves me that 2 there is equal to kt. Well, my time um, is what I kind of want to look for, right? So, and this is a time of a half-life, so that's what I'm going to call this. So I'm going to divide this by k, and I can go ln of 2, which is equal to 0.693 over k is equal to my half-life. Okay, so here, it, for a first order equation, is how I would find out the half-life of that equation. Um, so if you didn't get the derivation at all, that's okay. Um, just know that this is the equation that we want to use. If they say that my half-life is 100 seconds, then I simply I flip these two things around, um, and I get point... zero zero six nine three uh, is equal to my rate right and and you can go from there uh, to figure these different things out um, so that is the integrated rate law for first order reaction that is the half-life law what that's going to look like this right here for that um, we'll go through some practice problems with them and look at that in class uh, let's do second order and zero order reactions for the uh, integrated rate law now and uh, that'll be it for this week.